Okay, here we are. Let's try out this example and see if we can figure it out. So what do I have here? I've got a solid 0.5 inch diameter. Okay, as a note, that's my way of getting area. Steel hanger rod. It's used to hold up one end of a walkway support beam and the force carried by the rod is 5,000 pounds. Thank goodness we don't even have to worry about that distributed load. It just gives us the load is gonna be 5,000 pounds. Find the normal stress in the hanger rod and I can neglect the weight of the rod. Not too terribly bad. Let's go ahead and solve things. So the first thing is I need to figure out what my internal force is, which in this case, it's, it's really simple. I cut the rod and I say I've got forces going down. I've got forces going up. And just like in statics, we still have some of the forces equal to zero. There is no acceleration here. So my force going up, which I'll just call this F, is going to be equal to 5,000 pounds. Second thing, calculate the area using the diameter. So my equation for that is pi d squared over 4. I plug in the units it gave me, which was 0 0.5 inches. And I get the area is 0.19635 inches squared. Do you have to have the many sig figs? Honestly, no. But I often put way too many. Just be honest with you. I divide those two to get my stress. And it comes out to be 25,464 PSI. Is that too much? Will that mean the hanger rod fails? That's a question for chapter three. We're not there yet. In chapter three, though, we will start talking about when things fail and what stresses you can have for particular materials and how I tell what that is. But for now, we have our answer and we're happy to be. So I'll see you all next time as we continue to go through different types of stress that you're going to see in this course and in this chapter. Have a good one. Bye-bye.